Welcome, welcome, welcome to Pass Psych Tonight. I'm your host, esteemed <laughs> Professor Steve Ross, or as I'm commonly known, a bargain bin Paul Rudd. So, without the money, without the talent, without the good looks, and without the name, but with added digestive issues. So, oh, thank you so much for joining us. Now, our main story tonight concerns a statistical relationship known as correlation. And I know learning anything even remotely related to statistics sounds to many of you about as thrilling as categorizing mayonnaise by thickness, <laughs> watching a documentary about dads who watch documentaries, taste testing skim milk, or listening to a kid's bop version of WAP on loop. <laughs> You know I like to eat 11 days a week Wings and pizza Stuff that crust with extra cheese <laughs> Yeah Alright Yeah we feasting on some wings and that, that, pizza That's enough of that I can't stop Yeah That parody exists <laughs> And now you know You're welcome psychology fans Make sure to remember that next time you're feeling hungry Wah! So, bear with me here, and I think you'll have fun learning. <laughs> so, what is a correlation? What types are there, and how are they frequently misused? A correlation is research that examines the relationship between two numeric variables. So we're talking about numbers, or variables that give numbers as data. Participant scores or measurements are taken for two different items or variables, and the type of relationship between these two number sets is examined. Let's say that I ran a correlation with everyone watching. I might ask each of you to give me your height in inches, which would be variable one, and your weight in pounds, which would be variable two. I could do a correlation to see the relationship between these. Now, I would anticipate that as your height increases, so does your weight. You'll notice I ask for numeric variables, variables that generate numbers. I would not ask you your favorite color, the model car you drive, or which Muppet you think is hottest. <laughs> By the way, it's objectively gonzo. And that's a hill that I personally, I'm prepared to die on that, okay? Blue is a sensual color. And Gonzo, you know, he manages to occupy that sweet spot between being the bad boy and the Muppet next door. Gonzo's a sexual icon transgressive enough to bother your parents a little, but without irreparably damaging your relationship with your dad. Gonzo has the drip. End of story. I should also mention that this was a hotly debated topic in my meeting with the instructional design team. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of people who leaned into the easy, good listener vibe of Kermit, and then there were others who, you know, they liked that powerful, angry sexual charisma of Bunsen B. Honeydew's assistant beaker. But in the end, we landed on a 60-40 split in favor of Gonzo. Democracy is beautiful. And it's not just for having an excuse to sigh and discuss when your idiot uncle starts talking elections at Thanksgiving. In fact, why don't you make sure to mention this exact lecture to him the next time you're living this situation in November. <laughs> Anyways, so I might also do a correlation with variable one being age and variable two being GPA. I would ask for everyone in my sample to give me both of these statistics. After collecting this information, I'd start to look at the relationship between variables. In other words, as age increases, does GPA increase? Does it decrease? How are these related? That's what we're doing with a correlation. There are two main types of correlations to talk about, positive and negative. A positive correlation is one in which the two variables change in the same direction. As one increases, 
the other increases, which also means that as one decreases, the other decreases. Some examples of positively correlated variables would be hours studied and GPA, height and weight, Taco Bell outings and toilet paper roll purchases, and lastly, Ponderosa steakhouse trips and happiness level. Let me explain this. Family night each month as a kid for me was Ponderosa. And you know what? While they haven't updated their menu in 50 years, there are some things that are merely perfect exactly as they are. Like fire, the speed of light, the chemical composition of water, and yes, Ponderosa recipes. Applause, applause for the great steaks at Ponderosa. If we gave Ponderosa the applause that it truly deserves, every single adult in America would have broken wrists. I love Ponderosa. In fact, I will raise my children in the local Ponderosa and I'll tell them there's been a nuclear war and the air outside Ponderosa is immediately deadly. Also, they never have to see the complex horror of this world and they can live in the halcyon glory of Ponderosa forever. Now, I've repeatedly written Ponderosa headquarters requesting that they sponsor my lower back tattoo of their logo because I want to bring brand awareness to you, Ponderosa. But, unfortunately, I haven't heard a single thing back. I've heard nothing back. So here's what I'm going to say. It's your move, Ponderosa, all right? The ball's in your court. Do the right thing here. Do the smart thing, okay? Moving on. A negative correlation is one in which the two variables change in opposite directions. As one increases, the other decreases. So some negatively correlated variables would be course absences and GPA, miles ran per week, and body weight, age, and TikTok uploads, or the number of self-indulgent video lectures that Professor Ross gives you to watch, and the number of meaningful relationships that you'd estimate that he has in his life. <laughs> now, with huge data sets, how can we tell if variables are positively or negatively correlated? You can't just eyeball it and decide if it looks like the variables move in the same or opposite directions. No, what you'd have to do is you gotta enter your data into a stats program and then compute a value called a correlation coefficient. A correlation coefficient is a number that ranges from negative one to positive one and it tells you about the relationship between your variables. A positive number means a positive relationship between the variables like Ponderosa <laughs> and happiness. While a negative number would mean a negative relationship, like course absences and GPA. So this number tells you about the strength of that relationship as well. Right? So numbers close to zero, either positive or negative, they mean the relationship is weak and might represent variables with no relationship, like the number of Willem Dafoe films that you've seen and McRib purchases. <laughs> By the way, an AI drawing program generated this grotesque image when I entered Willem Dafoe eating a McRib. Technology is a grand thing. I hope that these image is cameo in your nightmares for years to come. May they haunt you for as long as I know that they're gonna haunt me. <laughs> Anyways, it's difficult to accurately predict anything with weak correlations like the one I just talked about. Whereas numbers that are further from zero and they're closer to one or closer to negative one, now that means you have a relationship between the variables that is stronger and we actually you know, can do something with those. We can use someone's value on one variable to more accurately predict where they'd fall on the other. But I would like to give a word of caution with correlations. Correlation does not equal causation. Just because two variables are correlated 
doesn't mean they cause one another to occur. For example, let's say that I looked at the shoe sizes and SAT scores of elementary and junior high children. What I would find is that as shoe size increases, so does SAT score. Those are strongly positively correlated variables. Does this mean shoe size causes SAT score? Right? Should I tell parents, you know what? Don't waste your money on SAT prep books. Don't send your kids to SAT prep classes. What you got to do, buy your child the biggest damn pair of Crocs you can find, and they're going to destroy that test. They're going to crush it. No. There's a third variable that likely explains this correlation, and that third variable is age. It's simple. As students get older, both their shoe size and their SAT score is going to increase. Now, I also want to make note that correlation doesn't guarantee you specific data. My friend Tyler here, right? He wore a size 13 when he was in eighth grade. And I used to see Tyler eating massive amounts of paper. He's not a smart guy. In fact, the reason people don't get yellow pages anymore is because he ate them all. <laughs> By the age of 31, Tyler was 410 pounds. 230, which was pure paperweight. He gobbled so many reams that several doctors, they were brought in by the CDC. The man can't go out and rain, and he can't eat glue, or he'd become paper mache. Now, even if you could infer causation from correlation, which you cannot, which direction would it go in? For instance, if intoxication level were positively correlated with number of freestyle dance moves, is the drinking causing the dancing, or are we drinking more to celebrate those sick moves? Now finally, I'd like to share the most famous example that illustrates why we absolutely can't say that correlation equals causation. Ice cream cone sales are strongly positively correlated with the murder rate, meaning that as ice cream cone sales rise, so does murder. Does this mean that if you're overdoing it on the mint chocolate chip, it's going to make you bloodthirsty for murder? Or will committing murder make you crave some Cherry Garcia? Ugh, I'm all tuckered out for manufacturing ghosts. It's time to kill my two favorite guys, Ben and Jerry. No, the explanation here is simple. Ice cream cone sales will increase in the summer, and murders will also increase in the summer. The third variable that explains this is temperature. Now think about it. Of course murders rise in the summer. How inconvenient is it to murder someone in the winter? You gotta <laughs> scrape ice off your car. You gotta wait for the windows to defrost. You gotta drive carefully over to your target. You gotta make sure you watch out for the black ice. You don't wanna hit a patch of black ice. Ugh. You know what? Wait till the summer and then kill that son. <laughs> and now this. And now, more spurious correlations courtesy of Tyler Vegan. All right, that's our show. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope we're back again soon. Good night. <laughs>